Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Um, hopefully, you guys can see and hear me. This is actually round two. There's a little technical difficulty with YouTube, but I think we're good. So we are good to get started with gardening grounds, or garden grounds, I should say. This is my public live I do every second and fourth Thursday, and it's really a Q&A session to help you all out with your gardens. And what we're going to focus on today is a quick overview of warm crops that you can still plant, plant now, get in round two, and how to use shade cloth. And then I will take any questions really related to that or anything about vegetable gardening. If you like this format, I have a perk membership where you pay monthly. I do four or five of these Q&As a month for about an hour, and the groups are small, 20 to 40 people. I answer all questions, and it's really set up to be a garden mentor and help you out. And the people in the perk memberships, they're very brilliant too, have lots of information, so it's a great way to share information, um, get questions answered, all of that. Um, check out the video description for perk membership link and also for a link to my YouTube community page where you can see kind of what events are scheduled for July. All right, so hello, and I am going to just set up the uh, chat here so that I can see it. Now throw out your questions and I will get started with the topic in one, one quick second here. Two quick seconds. All right, so it is actually July 13th. I just came in outside 95 degrees. Soil is warm, temperature is warm. Um, some areas it's way too hot. We have heat waves going on. Sadly, we have flooding going on. Um, maybe nature has wrecked your summer crops that you've already planted maybe in May. Um, maybe insects have come in, maybe diseases have come in. So what's really important to understand is that most of your summer crops, and I have a list here, I'm gonna go over some of them real quick. You can plant again right now, and then you can plant again in the beginning of August. And the reason you do that is your summer crops, direct seeded, germinate quickly, usually within about five days. They grow at an accelerated rate because it's warm, as long as you keep them watered. Extra water makes all the difference. So you can replace cucumbers that are beat up, squash that are beat up, any crop that is really beat up right now. And you can do this in most gardens. If you don't get a frost until like say later October, early November, you can plant again in uh, middle of August. It all depends on your zone. So I would highly recommend planting again. So real quick, some of the crops that you can plant right now, you know, even in the next week or two or three. Cucumbers, they take 40 days from germination to mature when it's this warm. Zooks and squash, your um, summer squash can be planted. They'll take about 40 days to produce. Bush beans, about 45 days. And again, all these are from seeds. Most of your melons that are under 80 days will produce. Sugar baby melons or bush melons, watermelons, cantaloupe, they will all produce. You can plant basil seed, you can plant dill seed. In fact, you can keep basil seed going really through the summer. Every three or four weeks, plant some more um, basil seed and you'll just get a nice crop of you know lush leaves rather than them all flowering and then the flavor of the leaf changes just keep the seeds going corn i'm planting corn this week 75 days you can have corn okra loves the heat accelerates growth that's right in about 75 days um, and even determinate tomatoes you can put seeds in now they'll germinate quickly and then you can go ahead um, with about 75 days you're going to get a harvest so those are just some of the crops you can plant now and the whole idea was to use garden grounds today to get into kind of you know the front of your mind that you can replant summer crops any questions with respect to that so if you're perk members you probably already know type question in front because it's hard for me to find it in the um, chat feed so if you asked a question already just type question in bold and throw your question out I will answer as many as I can if you want to do a super chat donation I will answer them with priority of course and just remember I do this as a perk membership too and this is something you can you know um, subscribe to all right so Shirley K my green bean blossom my green beans have blossoms but they are not forming beans does the heat cause plants to drop blossoms that's a good segue into shade cloth so yes heat especially when the roots, the top two to four inches of soil is heating up to 
90, 100, 110 degrees. When that 110 degree day, you have sun beating down, that soil temperature can get up to 120 degrees. Your plants are going to shut down. Beans don't usually do that. And depending on where you live, it's possible. Putting down mulch on top of your soil helps cool the leaves. Um, realistically, maybe, you know, they're a little bit delayed, but if you're getting the flowers, you're going to eventually get the green beans in there. You can water them a little more. You can use mulch. Um, that helps cool the roots and that keeps the plants producing. Some of you may notice that when it gets really hot, your tomatoes start dropping blossoms, your peppers start dropping blossoms, um, fruit will even fall off. That is because the heat, usually in the root system, is just too much. And in about, I don't know, 10 minutes, we'll talk about shade cloth. That's for the second part of the discussion. But Garden Grounds is really about answering your questions. And I like to throw a topic out there to kind of, you know, focus us on, you know, maybe a topic to help focus the questions is what I'm trying to say. So if your beans aren't forming, um, give it some more time. You should see them within seven days. Keep the watering going. Um, shade cloth may be okay, but beans do tend to do pretty well in the heat. You can also plant more beans now, just in case something happened with these plants. You can have more growing down the line. Tiny purple. I don't remember off the top of my head how long loofahs take, but they do grow pretty fast. Um, but you want to check the maturity date on the seed packet or online and then reduce it by maybe 10% because of the heat and see if you have enough time before the frost comes and kills off the loofahs. Jack Rudin, will seven spray kill squash bugs? They are getting really bad. So I find squash bugs are really hard to kill. I've tried using dusts, seven dust, which is chemical. I use Captain Jack's Spinosad most often, organic. I haven't found dead squash bugs, so I, I don't think it, it does that much. Um, spray is tough because you'd have to contact them. Um, then you're also spraying flowers and you're spraying everywhere and it does kill good insects. Organic or not organic. It doesn't matter if it's seven or spinosad. So I like to use the dust and I will put the dust on the bottom four inches of the zucchini or squash stem, remove the flowers so that bees aren't coming near it or anything like that and let the dust sit there. The squash bugs will crawl through it. If it does work, it will kill them that way. But I find I pretty much have to um, check for eggs under the leaves, remove them. And then a trick is if you water the base of your squash plant and just soak it in and just wait a few minutes, any squash bug down there hidden will kind of crawl up onto the stem and that's when I grab them and basically squash the squash bug. Um, Marianne. I planted two cantaloupes in 20 gallon grow bags, lots of growth, but no fruit. Should I start over? No, if they are green and they are getting flowers, I would just wait. It just takes time. And at some point, as long as you're watering regularly, the plants are green, they're growing, the flowers are going to show up. You can't speed up flowers. You can't change the number of flowers. Although some people think if you add more potassium and phosphorus, that helps. It might, but not significantly. Um, and what was else I was going to say? Oh, and you can't change if it's too many male flowers or too many female flowers. Nature will just do its thing and they should all, you know, catch up with each other and work for you. Laura, have you ever heard of putting milk on your squash plants also for onions? Do you chop off the greens while they're growing? So let's go backwards. Onions, when I put them into the ground as seed starts, I let them go. Some people cut off some of the greenery so that the root system doesn't have to work to support it till it's established. That's up to you. I find it doesn't matter that much. Um, I don't cut greenery off at any other time. You want the greenery on there for maximum energy to your um, onion. The greenery will flop over as it's getting close to be harvested and I kind of just let it go. Milk does work on squash plants, but it works best if it's whole milk, not and if you got milk that wasn't pasteurized, but it's hard to find out homogenized. Anyway, the chemical in milk reacts with the sun. I've read about this. It's kind of cool. I don't do it because milk is more expensive than hydrogen peroxide or baking soda, what I tend to use. So the sun and the milk, the whole milk reacts and it creates <laughs> some kind of reaction. I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it's really interesting if you want to look it up. And that reaction kills the fungi. So it does work on powdery mildew and stuff like that. 
Um, the only way to get rid of chipmunks is to trap and release them, sadly. Squirrels, chipmunks, anything that's small that can get into your area. Uh, squirrels climb over fences. You have to trap and release them. It's tough, but that's what you have to do. Questions. Is there such thing as bad mulch? I've mulched some tomatoes with lemon bomb cuttings because the bush was so massive. They seem to all have blight now. So you're not going to you're not going to cause blights or fungi to come into your garden. And here's the premise that you go out to the field, brand new, you remove the grass, whatever, you start growing. The fungi show up, early blight, late blight. They're spores, they float in the air, they drift over. You're not gonna do anything with mulch that's gonna cause a problem. In fact, mulch helps because if the fungi are overwintering or kind of hanging out in the soil and growing, putting down mulch stops those spores from splashing up onto your plant. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, Lawrence family, it's not, and make sure you, I saw this one, but make sure you put question in front. It's not bad for tomato plants to bend their roots. We stake them up for our convenience, for managing pests, disease, and just tending the plant. They typically want to fall over, bend, flop. They root out wherever the vine contacts the soil. They grow more. And in fact, you get a more vigorous plant and more production if you let a plant just sprawl everywhere. However, they can get unruly. Um, Disease is set in easier and they can become a mess. So it's fine for them to bend. All right, and we're good to go. I mean, the public live, we go to about 1130. Let me take a few more questions. Um, and again, if you want to do the uh, super chat, that will pop up and I'll answer that with priority. Sean M, question. My tomato plants are dying. There's little tiny pink reddish bugs all over them. What are they? And is there anything that, that I can do to get rid of them? I don't know what they are. I need to see pictures. Um, you can use dust on them, insect dust. Spinosad is organic. You could spray them with um, an oil type spray or any kind of insecticide, soapy spray. See if that helps. The idea is, though, is if you use any new sprays from the store, from my channel that you make, anywhere else you make them, you want to test spray new sprays, wait 48 hours, make sure it does no damage. But it's possible, um, you know, that these insects are weakening the leaves, the leaves are yellowing, but you would have to put down a dust or a spray to, to combat them. Donna, I'm dealing with some curling leaves on my tomato plants. They are green, no discoloration, just curl. I hand water three, four times a week. They're in full sun. They're fine. Curling leaves, nobody knows what it is. We all want to think we do. Stress from too much water, too little water, too much heat, a cold spell can cause the leaves to curl. You sound like you are handling it the right way. You're watering three to four times a week. You're keeping moisture in there. The leaves are green. You just keep doing what you're doing and just let the plant work it out. There is no cure to fix that. And we don't really know why necessarily it happens. <laughs> when we don't know why, we usually say it's, you know, nature, a combination of things. I use jute, Nina, to tie my plants um, to stakes. And yeah, you can use twine. Jute is just a natural fiber. You see it everywhere. Shout out to Gail from Dixie. That's nice. They are beautiful gardens. We do a series for Perk memberships, Grow As We Grow, where different tiers can send in a video question or videos of the garden, and I put together a whole video um, called Grow As We Grow, and we just show off our gardens. And last episode was really, really good. So Rhett just popped up as being uh, a member for 10 months, so I appreciate it. Scuffed potatoes, if they're cut into the flesh, they can dry and scab over, but like mine, I've just pulled out. Anything that has a larger wound in it tend to begin to rot because I am drying mine outside or kind of um, letting them scab over for that two-week period. But a scuff or something like that, that's fine. You, you know, they might last. I would kind of put scuffed or damaged potatoes in one place. So you can inspect them and just look for any kind of rotting and get rid of them easier than mixing them in with the rest of your potatoes. 
All right, so a few more questions. Where are we at? Ooh, 11.16 already. So I just did a video on sunflowers, and sunflowers actually can impede the growth of tomato plants depending on how close that sunflower root system is to your tomato root system. It's not something to over worry about, but just keep it in mind. I don't know what that is because it keeps getting reseeded and I lost track of it, but it's just brilliant, beautiful yellow heads and it's like like 40 of them on a 14 foot um, sunflower stalk. Kimberly, tomatoes will just stay green till they're ready to turn. There's nothing that you can do or do wrong. Uh, there's nothing you can do to speed up them changing color quicker and there's nothing that you're doing wrong that's keeping them green. Karen, what's the best way to cure potatoes? So I am actually in the middle of building a structure to cure potatoes, garlic, and onion. So I pull them out of the ground. I leave them outside for two days. I harvest when it's not going to rain for two days, let them dry. And then they need to go into a shadier area, you know, cure, I don't know, maybe two weeks. It depends a lot on the heat and humidity. So it's important to have a plan of where your potatoes are going to go. Um, what I found is best is what I just described and I'm putting a structure in a shady area they're going to cure outside I do have a basement I could put them in but it's a lot of potatoes and I don't want to have to haul them all into my basement then haul them out I want them in one central place so I am building this structure super chat thank you Coco I am not getting quite enough grass clippings for adding as mulch to help with weeds if I use blast, black plastic, do you think that would make the tomato roots too hot? I do at this time because the black plastic, even if it's porous, the whole key with your tomatoes now, and you could use shredded hardwood, you could use hay or straw, you could use chopped leaves, um, any kind of organic matter. The idea with mulch is that it puts a you know mulch level over your root system. Water still goes through, the earth stays cooler, the, the roots stay cooler, Worms, microbiology, love the mulch, mixes it together, and over time, it just really helps your soil develop. If you put down plastic, it's going to keep the water away from the shallow roots. Um, it can heat up the soil, certainly. I would probably go without plastic at this point. It's great in the beginning of the season to warm up the soil, but at this point, I, I think it would get too hot. I would just kind of look for other organic matter um, and it could be you know shredded hardwood not the big chips of wood but double shredded hardwood or something like that um, and I also would add to that you can always experiment like I don't know anything 100% I've learned a lot and I'm still learning so you could try covering some of your tomatoes with the black plastic see how they do if it does well then you have a great alternative you know for next year but it's not like either do it or don't do it maybe do a little experiment and see if it works i would also if you're able to um, if you have a friend family member or whomever who cuts grass and doesn't use chemical sprays you know work out with them on a day of a fresh cut grab their stuff and bring it to your property a little bit of work but i love grass clippings All right, so let's see. Let's do one more question. Melanie, Donald Savage, or... All right, so, well, it says Melanie, but then Donald. Um, that just confused me. So sometimes I know the screen names are different. Um, my tomatoes look kind of sad, no flowers and wrinkly. So it's, it's kind of hard, I need to see a picture, but when tomatoes are struggling and maybe the leaves are wrinkly and the plant doesn't look good, that's when I just give them the extra water soluble fertilizer. It could be fish emulsion, agro thrive, could be the chemical types, it doesn't matter, but I'm just giving them an extra dose of nitrogen to allow that plant to kind of get what it needs to grow through maybe the wrinkling leaves or damaged leaves or just to get stems growing and leaves growing. And then I sort of back off as that plant takes off. Um, and then another super here. Thank you, Ruth. Harding off my pepper plants, 16 to 18 varieties and something in the matter of 
In the middle of the night, chewed most of the leaves off, left stumps. I potted and fertilized the plants, had some leaves, leaf, leaves left, anything that I can do. Um, so if the stems and the roots are intact, and this is where I use the chemical type fertilizers. It might be miracle Grow. You don't like that company. Get rid of it. Um, plant expert. Chemical fertilizers will not hurt you, your plants, or your soil unless you abuse them in some crazy way. But this is an emergency, and the chemical types have a really high concentration of nitrogen, and this is what those plants need now. They were damaged, and I would use that. If you don't want to use that, use fish emulsion or something with a higher end. The bottom line is that giving them the nitrogen, putting them in a place that they're protected from, probably mice came through and chewed them or something like that. They will regrow the leaves. They've sort of been topped off. They'll be a little bit stockier, but you can 100% save them. And you know, you don't need to overdo it. Quick splash of the fertilizer, keep an eye on them, keep them moist, and they will take off. I have plenty of peppers that are beat up, and I save them all the time with water-soluble nitrogen. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video on it. I have plants that are yellow, struggling, dried out, beat up, and I'm going to do a video showing how the uh, higher nitrogen during an emergency helps fix the plants. All right, so we're at 11.22 already. So the next thing is shade cloth. Now, if you're in Maryland or higher heat, I recommend a 70% shade cloth. That means it creates 70% shade, lets in 30% of the light. If you're somewhere where you have less summer heat than Maryland, a 50% 50 shade cloth works. Let's in 50% of the light, creates 50% shade. I will use shade cloth over my basil. I will use shade cloth sometimes over peppers. I will use it over tomatoes. What it does, and you angle it so that when the southern sun is you know, at its highest point, the shade cloth blocks that sun from getting the root systems of the plants that you're targeting. Cools, cools the soil greatly, and that cooling helps the plants continue to produce, and that's how you use shade cloths. And mine's kind of angled that morning sun gets to the plants. Southern sun gets blocked. As the western sun comes and the sun sets, those plants get more of the sun. It really makes a big difference, especially in July and August when temperatures are getting into the 90s and 100s. The, the effect of using mulch and shade cloth can keep the root systems of your plants cooler, your summer crops, and they will continue to produce more. And even like with cucumbers, the leaves tend to get beat up less and they produce better. All right, so we are at we'll go for about another 10 minutes and again if you do like um if you're interested in the perk memberships and you like this format you know i do this four or five times a month through them all right let's see dixie oh wait she's just talking to carla uh here, let me just try and find some questions here and it's like it kind of gets busy which i appreciate all you guys signing in Tiny, I'm not going to make these seeds available. By the time I get to them, they usually get eaten by um, the birds and stuff like that. But I'll, you know, I'll look. I don't plan on doing it, but maybe I would. Um, maybe I'll try and grab some of those. So diversity, uh, I am going to build something a low tunnel so that I can grow greens through the winter. I think this year I have a smaller greenhouse. I'm not going to do a lot of winter growing in there except for holding over perennial plants for the following year but i am working on something what i've done this year is my garden's pretty big so i'm not over planting it finally after 15 years i got that through my head so i have more space open and i'm going to be changing some of that space into something that i can grow uh, greens in through november december and through january hopefully Nina, I have a few bell peppers coming in on my plant, but the plant is still short and the flowers are close together. I would I would just let it go. Bell peppers can be stocky. They're stockier regular than regular potatoes, or potatoes, regular pepper plants. Um just let them grow. If it looks like they're really, you know, cramming each other, you can remove a flower or you can take a fruit a little bit early, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, 
um, on a hit. In Maryland Zone 7, the female flowers of my zooks are not opening at all. What can I do? No chance of pollination. Thank you. So I don't know why that is. Um, the tip of the flowers are usually sealed and then they open. You can always cut that tip and maybe that will help with them opening. Could be another reason. Um, I mean, plants know how to do that because that's how they survive. Usually the plants end up working it out, but there's nothing you can really do to make the flower open, except maybe cutting the tip a little bit, which helps, which will allow, if the inside of the flower is forming, if you cut the tip, it's gonna be open and pollinators could get into there. Clyte, can she use cardboard in certain parts to cover open areas to keep weeds down? I use cardboard all the time and you can certainly do that. All right, so we got about five minutes left. Don Bird, I saw that uh, in your last video that you don't have shade cloth over um, your peppers. I don't need them everywhere. Peppers do really well in my area. Our temperatures get pretty hot for like cucumber and zucchini. Um, basil, I use it predominantly for that, and for tomatoes. But the peppers I tend to let go. I also, if you notice, some of my peppers are blocked by asparagus, so this they get a little bit of shade that way. Um, so I could use it. I kind of watch them. If production seems to start failing more so recently, then I will go ahead and do that. Uh, TV, thanks for the super. Um, zone 5B completed uh, planted potatoes with beans, companion planted potatoes with beans, freak house storm caused damage, fed with nitrogen to heal, potatoes grew too fast and fall over. Any help? So I'm just thinking. I mean, it's all right if the potatoes fall over and flop and there's determinate variety potatoes where the stems just grow and grow and grow and they flop and you can mound over them and they will grow potatoes out of that. Um, no, I'm sorry, those are indeterminate. It's kind of like tomatoes, those vines keep growing. You can have determinate potatoes where they grow and then they flop over but only potatoes form on the roots. So depending on what you're growing, you could hill some earth around those um, vines to get more potatoes. But you can just leave them. I mean, they're going to flop and they're going to move. Potato leaves can get really beat up, like 50%, and you're still going to get energy to the potatoes and they will be okay. Um, the beans should be okay. I would just, you know, the whole key with the potatoes is just keep them watered regularly more often than you think, and I think everything will be okay. Um, floppy leaves on your potatoes, that's nothing to worry about. It may not look great to our eye, but the plants themselves aren't going to suffer. So I see somebody's trying to help somebody. If you're using a mobile device, and I've talked with YouTube, they make it really hard to find perk memberships, but you're looking for a button that says join. And on a laptop or desktop, join is everywhere. In fact, there's a link in the video description that takes you to the, my main page and join pops out. Sometimes on the mobile device, it's more difficult, but you're looking for join. All right, so we are at 11.30. For perk members that are on, yesterday at 7, I accidentally had two live streams going. So half the people did the perk membership Q&A, and I talked with you for about an hour. The other half were thinking something was wrong and went back to their gardens. So I'm doing a makeup Q&A at 12 p.m., and I'll do that right after this. TT. And I'll take a few more questions. We'll go to 1140 because I got to sit in here anyway to do the next event. Um, I planted a potato that was sprouting, never had above ground growth, and I thought it died. Dug it up and there were multiple potatoes. Interesting. So I don't know why if 
it never got any above growth, but it's possible that it took the whole potato and it uses the energy of that whole potato and that will feed the roots in the plant. That's how they get growing. That's why we put in the potato pieces. And they could have just taken the energy from one potato and made a bunch of smaller potatoes. And if you left that all in there, probably those smaller potatoes would send up greenery when they're ready, ready and the whole process would start over. I, don't, I swear to made that answer up, but I think that's accurate. Ruth, um, I think you're trying to find the join. I appreciate it. It's definitely there. And again, it's just really odd. Sometimes it doesn't show up. Um, I mean, I don't want to switch out of here now, but, you know, I, I've looked at it. Derek, is it okay to throw vine borer infested plants into a compost pile? Um, it really is. I mean, the thing is, is that the vine borer survives off of a living plant and then it burrows into the ground. So you're disturbing it and that's going to die off. Um, you know, some people like to find the vine borers, kill the, the larva that's chewing in there. Um, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. Again, the whole idea is that if you went and started a brand new garden, the vine borers find your garden. So they're going to show up anyway. The whole idea for vine borers is to sort of manage them. And that goes back and maybe in the last five minutes kind of wrap up with this point. By planting your cucumbers, your squash, your zucchini again, you can plant through the life cycle of diseases and pests. Like the vine borer is active now and maybe it kills off every squash plant you have. You put in some new seeds this week or next week, plants take off, the vine borer's life cycle is gone, these plants thrive, they produce, and you're happy through you know the beginning of August into September when you don't have that disease or pest. So I do really encourage people to think about planting cucumber, zooks, bush beans, melon, basil, dill, corn, okra, and determinate type tomatoes again. And if your temperatures stay frost free, you know, mostly warm till late October late November, you can also put in a, a third wave of these warm crops. All right. Uh, honeydew. When using neem oil for aphids, do you spray off the aphids with water first then apply the neem to the plants? Thanks. So neem oil helps kill chewing insects. Neem oil on aphids is more about it being any oil. So any oil coats that soft-bodied insect and smothers it. So I would I would tend to spray it with them on there. I know hitting it with a hose washes them off. It's hard for them to get back on the plant. They usually get eaten when they're on the ground anyway. But I would just spray it with the neem oil and coat the aphids um, and let the oil smother them. Rebecca, how do you get rid of beetles on your plants organically? You can use spinosad. Um, that's an organic dust. Neem oil is organic. It's a spray. BT is organic. It's a spray. And that helps kill off chewing insects. There's, I mean, there is a video link in this cast right now. But what happens is even if you click it, sometimes it takes you to, it's my landing page. And on different devices, that landing page shows differently. So that's why you're having trouble finding the join button, even if you're using a link. And I want, like, I, I get to talk with YouTube every once in a while for something they help me with, you know, building my channel. I want just a button that I can put in the video. You hit join, there, you, you'd sign up for perk memberships. Maybe they'll work on that. Nina, can you grow scallop squash in a 10 gallon? You can, scallop squash get huge. I would recommend 20 gallons or higher. In a 10 gallon, you're gonna to have to water it at least two times a day when it's maximum size, full sun. Susan, will dust, let me read it. Will dust cornmeal on cabbage help deter eating worms. Um, will dusting cornmeal on cabbage help? Eat? I don't know. 
cornmeal does help with ants. They ingest it and it swells up and it causes problems in their abdomen. I don't know for the worms. For my worms, all my cabbage plants or the brassicas, I use spinosad dust. Um, and I use neem oil spray, or actually I use neem oil spray first. If that works, I don't use the dust. So I have two defenses. Austin uh, is in Orlando. My garden is severely delayed and this will be my first time starting seeds in the summer. What are some heat and drought tolerant plants that are so... I don't know to be honest with you, anything that's specifically heat or drought tolerant. I know that your cool weather is going to come quickly. Um, maybe some people can throw out some heat and drought tolerant plants that would help you out. Um, all the ones that I went over, you know, it, it really depends. They love the 80 degree temps, lower 90 degree temps. When the temperatures get into the 90s and 100s, most plants shut down. The only one that I don't think shuts down is okra. D. My crow barrow French beans weren't watered for about five days as I was away. One bucket looks pretty poor. The other one, okay, what can I do to boost them? So first thing is if the roots dried out, the plants are going to be damaged. And if you have time, I would replant in another bucket. Just get them going. Those plants that grow from seed develop great root systems, greenery looks good, watered regularly, are going to probably surpass these. If you want to try and save these, be consistent with the water. You can give them extra nitrogen, even though beans fix their own nitrogen, they're going to like that to kind of get growing again. Once they reestablish, the new green growth will look great and they should take off, but it can take a while, especially if the root systems have dried out. Um, Marianne, you cannot grow onions now technically if because they're all based on the length of day for the onion to actually bulb up and we've kind of missed a lot of that for the onions you could plant maybe short day onions and I'm sort of kind of guessing they're going to grow a lot of greenery which you can use maybe form a little bit of bulb but depending on where you live the length of the summer days it's going to impact how those onions would develop Garlic is going to get beat up from the heat, but in theory, soft neck garlic, like the garlic grown in California, you can press into the ground and you can grow now. The bulbs might not get huge. Again, you could eat the greenery. I would encourage you to, to experiment and give it a try. Glad to help, Austin, and thank you for the book support. I have another book coming out over my shoulder too. That's going to be available in November. All right, we have to wrap up the uh, garden grounds. And again, for those in PERC memberships at 12 o'clock, I'm gonna be doing the PERC membership Q&A. Thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, super chats too. And I will see you guys for the live public two Thursdays from now. I do this every second Thursday and every fourth Thursday of the month. Thanks for watching.